stand with me as we read the Word of God together this morning. We are in the book of Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. And this is a very, very unique portion of Scripture. Um, we are moving ahead from our study on the autopsy of a deceased church and moving on to some topics, and then we'll do a series that will lead right up to Easter. Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 through 8, Solomon, the wisest man to walk the face of the earth, wrote these words under inspiration from Almighty God. He said, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing a time to gain and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. Father, we pray today that your word as promised in Isaiah 55, will not return void, empty, but it will accomplish your purpose for every individual who is here in this sanctuary. Lord, help us to decide right now that we're going to take your word seriously and we're going to endeavor to do something beneficial with it. Father, we know that you're still speaking to hearts. And we have to quiet our heart now to hear your still small voice. Father, we know there are many voices clamoring and crying out for our attention. But yours is the only voice that we desire to hear. Help us now to be able to concentrate on you. We ask it in Christ's name and for his sake. Amen. You can be seated, folks. My mind was racing this week because I have heard so many sermons preach on this particular portion of Scripture. If you were listening, yes, that was uh, from my instructions to Alan to play that famous bird song, I think, from 1965, Turn, 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 and they took it right from the Word of God. They took it right from Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. Everyone here is going through seasons of life. You might have recently entered a particular season in your life, and perhaps it's pleasant. Perhaps it is not pleasant. But as you go through various turns and seasons and distractions and various emotions that gain your attention, don't ever think that it is chaotic, that it does not rest beneath the plan of God, because verse 1 says, to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. God is aware of your times, and your times are in his hand. He is aware of the seasons that you are going through. Job, the richest man in the east, was doing fine and enjoying life, but suddenly he entered a difficult season, a difficult time. 
Esther was entering a, another season in her life when she was told that perhaps she had been raised up for a time such as this. The Apostle Paul, as a thorn in the flesh was administered to him in 2 Corinthians 12 and prayed three times for it to be removed, God said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness, but this was a different season for the Apostle Paul. I am convinced that how we handle the particular seasons we are going through will aid in encouraging believers and reaching the lost. I do not believe that God wants us to be devastated by the seasons that we enter into whether it's discouragement, whether it's anxiety, whether it's emotional distress or physical difficulty, I believe that God wants us to realize there is a purpose and there is an order to these things we're going through. Everyone here will lose loved ones. Everyone here will get sick. Everyone here will have relational difficulty. Everyone here will have financial concerns at some point in your life. These are the seasons of life. And the birds had it right in echoing Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, in that famous song, Turn, Turn, Turn. If Solomon were alive, he would be demanding lyrical credit for his inspired words that were used. But probably as a pastor, one of my great responsibilities is to help folks to be able to maneuver through the seasons of life and have joy and have anticipation and not only be able to serve God and trust God when things are good, but bring things to his feet when they're good and bring things to his feet when they're not so good. Have you found there are many twists and turns and detours and life changes? Solomon, who is called the preacher in the word of God, he was somewhat of a journalist, walking through life with a ledger, taking notes, trying experiments, trying to see what would satisfy, what would bring joy, what would bring happiness under the sun as he lived his life and he went through many different seasons. He didn't find too many good answers here on earth. In fact, he found none. But as we read through the book of Ecclesiastes, we come to find that the conclusion of the whole matter was fear God and keep his commandments because that is the whole duty of man. Do you listen for the voice of God? Do you ask him to monitor you when you go through various seasons in your life? Do you understand they might change dramatically this afternoon, tomorrow, for the good or not so good? We have to be able to accept that because we are God's moral compass in this world. We are the ones indwelt by the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is the restrainer of evil. He holds back the evil. We've got to be good soldiers of Jesus Christ. We have to war a good warfare. And being able to do that is to be able to sense and navigate changes in the battle plan as we go through difficult times in our life. We don't want to be ignorant of Satan's devices. We want to understand them. And when we've grown, we want to grow again. Back in 1995, I never thought I would be talking this way. Those are the seasons. Those are the changes. I never thought I'd be reflecting back 25 years. I was at 
Faith Baptist Church, a church I started on the Cape, and I was there for 18 years. We were having a missions conference. I've always loved missions. We decided to have somewhat of a road rally dinner, and I've shared this with some folks. It's, it's one of the good things and not so good things of two congregations coming together. Some of you have to listen to the story twice. But we decided we were going to have a road rally where people would ride to one house and get the appetizer, maybe get a salad, maybe get soup. They'd go to another house for the main course. They would end up at the final house to get the dessert. And we would have missionaries planted at each home who would fellowship with the people who came through, share their burden. It was exciting. We passed out schematics, rules, navigational sheets, whatever you want to call them. I think we had about eight cars that were circling Cape Cod and going to about five different stops. There was a navigator and there was a driver. And the navigator had to read the questions and the riddles and figure out where to make turns. I happened to be with a young man at that point, he's no longer a young man, Ben Feldai. He was starting a church, he'd come to our church on Sunday night, him and his wife Tammy, for encouragement. Ben now runs over a thousand on Cape Cod, at Cape Cod Church. And Ben was my navigator, and Ben is somewhat of a know-it-all. So Ben knew he'd have no difficulty with the riddles and with the questions and how to navigate us to that first stop. Well, he was right. He navigated us to the first place where I guess we got the appetizer. He navigated us to the second place, and I don't know what we got there, but it was a different family's home. And then it came to the main course. We were searching for that house. And he's looking at the schematic, and we came to a four-way stop, an intersection. And he read what he read, and he said, hmm, make a right. Now, I knew where all the stops were, because I was the pastor. So very quietly under my breath, I said, oh, I wouldn't do that. And he went, oh, just like the Holy Spirit. And I think that's what the Holy Spirit does sometimes. We think we're forging ahead, doing the right thing. And the Holy Spirit says, oh, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't go there. So he made a left because he knew where I was going. And he knew it was the main course, which was his favorite thing. So we ended up at that house and had the meal, and then he did just fine finding the house where the dessert was. Do you listen for the voice of God? Do you look for the direction of God in your life? Do you make decisions without talking to him about it? Or do you run off in a direction and say, Lord, I'm going in that direction, and if you'd like to come along, that would be fine. I learned a long time ago that God is not my co-pilot. He's the pilot. He's not the general manager. He is the CEO. He is in charge of my life. And Wednesday night, I said to our small group, I am resigning from being the CEO of my life. I'm done with that. I don't want to run my life. I have not done a great job in the flesh. I need God to direct and run my life through the seasons of life. Or I'll never make it. It's a tough world. There's so much hurt and discouragement. Our own minds condemn us and cause us not to be able to move forward. So we definitely, definitely need him. I want us to notice a couple of things that will help you to navigate through the seasons of life. Number one, if you've never submitted to this thought, 
Number one, God is in control. We are not. Boy, that's deep, huh? He is in control. We are not. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 again, to everything there is a season. A time for every purpose under heaven. I want to tell you, I'm sorry, I'm not a know-it-all, but being pastoring for 35 to 40 years, most Christians do not check in with God. Most Christians do not say, Lord, what do you want me to do? And if it's against what I want to do, I won't do it. How many bathe things in prayer saying, I want to hear your voice, I want to do your will, I want to be obedient to you? Colossians chapter 1 tells us some things about Jesus and why we should listen for his voice as we go through the seasons of life. First off, it says he is before all things. Sometimes it's the coolest thing in the world to talk to an old person who's been around for 95 or 100 years. Isn't it cool to talk to them, you know, if they're sharp with their history and what went on? Look at everything that took place in the last 100 years. It's so cool to talk to them and to see their perception. Well, is it any different with Jesus, who is before all things? The author and the finisher of our faith, the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. He's before all things. He's the creator. He made you. He knew you before you were even made and while you were in your mother's womb. He not only created you, he is the sustainer. He holds you together. Hey, when did you receive Christ as Savior? That was a great monumental time in your life. But he not only saved you, but he keeps you saved. Amen? Listen, if it were up to me, I would have received Christ in the morning, and I would have lost it by mid-morning but he holds us together once we're born into his family. He is the image of the invisible God who walked with his disciples and who lives in your heart, who says where two or more are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. Philippians 2, 10 and 11 says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Such power in the name of Jesus, wanting to hear his voice, wanting to know his direction, realizing I'm not the CEO of my life. God is in control or at least he should be. Is your desire there to acknowledge his ownership and direction? I wrote something on Facebook maybe a month ago. I'm not on there often, but I'm very profound when I come on. And I wrote some things on Facebook. I shared this even in one of our small groups. This is how most Christians are. And if this is you, and this is kind of your thought process, get out of there. Talk to him today. Recommit. Set up a monument, a memorial with God today to get where you ought to be. It's entitled, Three Dollars Worth of God. It says, I would like to buy three dollars worth of God, please. Not enough to explode my soul or disturb my sleep, but just enough to equal a glass of warm milk or a snooze in the sunshine. I don't want enough of God to make me love a black man or pick beets with a migrant. I want ecstasy, not transformation. 
I want warmth of the womb, but not a new birth. I want a pound of the eternal in a paper sack. I would like to buy $3 worth of God, please, by Wilbur Rees. And for the most part, that's how Christians are living their life. I'll put in my half an hour Sunday morning, maybe more. I want a little bit of God, but not too much. I don't have to want to rethink things or change my direction or say no to myself because I sense that God's not in something. I want to be the CEO of my life. Do you want more than $3 worth of God? I pray that you do. Secondly, God sees the big picture. We do not. Remember I said this afternoon you might go into another season of life? Tomorrow you might enter another season of life. God knows that. Psalm 31 and verse 15. Psalm 31 and verse 15. You can follow it on the PowerPoint. I'd encourage you to bring your Bible. I love to take notes and highlight stuff and remember things that will help me in the future. Psalm 31 and verse 15 David says, my times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. I read a little bit more than I gave Alan. As we go through this life and our journey, we're kind of like watching through a parade through a knothole in the fence. We can't see the whole parade at once. If you peek through a hole, you'd say, here comes the tuba. Here come the twirlers. Wow, here comes the VFW. Here come the cheerleaders. Here come the pretty flags. But God sees the parade from beginning to end. Life is kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. And this is why... I say that. Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 11, the first part of the verse says, He has made everything beautiful. You know what beautiful means? Fitting. He has made everything fitting in its time. We know there is a big picture, don't we? We just don't know what it is. So we should proclaim, my time is in your hand. God, please navigate my direction. God, help me through the seasons of life, especially the ones that devastate me. Now, when you're younger, the seasons of life are pretty cool for the most part. I mean, you go through some heartaches. But when you're young, you know... You're playing high school sports, you're graduating, you're deciding on a college, at some point in time a vocation, at some point in time perhaps a life's partner, perhaps kids in the future somewhere. And those are all kind of neat seasons of life if they're dictated by the Lord, right? I mean, there can be hurt and sorrow in those things, but if you're looking up to God, they can be some pretty exciting things. Seems like the older we get, we have more seasons of life that are on the negative side of things, at least by our perception, than the positive side. All I'm trying to say today is it can all be positive. If you realize it's ordered and it's dictated by God and our times are in his hands, and there is a purpose as we move from one season to the next. And I think that's important for us to know. It's interesting when we view people in Scripture. We say, well, no wonder Joseph did okay. Look at how things turned out. No wonder Job made it through and he didn't curse God or sin. Look at how things worked out. No wonder, no wonder, no wonder. Friends, come on. 
You and I get to see the beginning and the middle and the end when we read the Word of God. They didn't know what part they were in. They didn't know when one season was going to end and another was going to begin. Joseph didn't know that he was going to end up being the number two man in Egypt. They trusted God where they were at. They were joyful where they were at. They were in tune with him and listening to his still small voice where they were at. I can only grab a hold of where I am right at this moment. And wouldn't it be cool, Alan, like that video, if I were preaching and suddenly I was gone. And everyone here who has named the name of Christ as their Savior was gone. What a great season that'll be. To be caught up in the air with him. That will be very, very exciting. So there is a big picture. We just don't know where we're at in it. So why not trust him? Why not look up and check out what God has to say because we don't know the beginning and the middle and the end. But he does. C.S. Lewis made this statement. I like this. He said, if I find in myself a desire which no experience in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that I was made for another world. Amen? Amen. That's the only way to take it. I look at people sometimes, they think I'm being a wise guy, and I say, you're not home yet. We're going through momentary pain and trials and heartache. It cannot be compared with what's ahead. I'm sorry, sometimes you're going to have to reach out by faith. Sometimes it can't be right there every moment for you and for me. We have to trust God. Ecclesiastes 3.11, God says... To help you with the seasons of life, I have placed eternity in your heart. Ecclesiastes 3.11, the last part of the verse says, Also, he has put eternity in their hearts. Why? To discern the seasons of life as we move on into eternity. Our text, Psalm 31.15, My Times are in your hand. I get such a good feeling when I say that to God. My time is in your hand. I know I get anxious. I know I get fearful. I know I get discouraged. I know I don't view things the way I should sometimes. And sometimes all the life just goes out of my body like a balloon losing air. You ever have that? But my times are in your hand. Help me to see the seasons of life the way you do. Thirdly, let God be God and stand in awe of him. Don't stand in awe of anything other than God. Stand in awe of God, what he has already accomplished and what he promises to accomplish. Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 14, it says, I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be added to it, and nothing taken from it. God does it that men should fear before him. How many times in the Bible does it say, in the fullness of time, Jesus was born? Do you realize in the fullness of time, Jesus will return again? It's a designated time already. In the mind of God, it might mess up your plans. That's why the Bible says in James, when you say, I'm going to go to such and such a city and conduct some business and make gain, God says we ought to say God willing because our times are in his hand and he moves us from season to season. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, I know you know this. Some of you have memorized it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not onto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct 
thy paths. I wrote down seven steps to follow to be able to navigate the seasons of life. They're not that deep, but very few are doing them. Number one, don't depend on you. Number two, cry out to God. Pray without ceasing. Number three, run from evil. 1 Thessalonians 5.22 says, abstain from all appearances of evil. Number four, put God first in your life. He will not share the throne of your heart with anything else. The best gift you can give to your husband, to your wife, to your kids, is to love God more than anything. If you will do that, your life will be filled with satisfaction. Put God first. Seek him first. And God will work in your life. The fifth thing, check yourself by God's word. Am I doing what the Bible tells me to do? I better check it out. I better stare into the mirror, which is called the word of God, so that I am reminded what kind of person I am. Because we forget, don't we? We move out of church, we move from out from under the word of God, and we're back to doing our own thing sometime. Number six, listen to the Holy Spirit. Number seven, rest in God's love. The fourth thing, the arrival at God's destination. I'm glad that God talks to us and he gives us reasons and he loves us and he knows we have questions. I know there were plenty of times where I told my kids when they wouldn't listen, they'd say, why? Why do I have to do that? I'd say, because I said so. And they'd be like, all right, I hear that. I don't like it, but I hear it. Thank God for a daughter that all I had to do was look at her sternly and she'd start crying. Boy, has that changed. <laughs> The arrival at God's destination. Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, and verse 13. Solomon says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is man's all. Fear God and keep his commandments. My eyes welled up with tears last night when Johnny said, I would rather be in this chair, this wheelchair, with Jesus than to be out of this wheelchair without Jesus. She accepted, finally, after a fight, the season of life, that this was God's will for her life. And God used it. And God brought glory to himself. Hey, folks, knowing that God is in control does not necessarily mean we'll always understand or we'll always appreciate his timing or the season that we find ourselves in. I was looking at this stuff. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to mourn, not forever, and a time to dance. And skipping a few, we go down to a time to gain, a time to lose. Remember Job? Naked came I into this world, naked I shall return thither. The Lord gave, the Lord takes away, blessed be the name of the Lord, a time to keep. A time to throw away, those of you who are hoarders. A time to tear, a time to sow, a time for silence, for me. A time to speak, a time to love, a time to hate, a time for war, a time for peace. To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. Folks, perhaps you're going through a difficult time right now. 
This is not a season I would have chosen. One writer made this statement, when you cannot trace his hand, trust his heart. We cannot see the big picture, but we know that God loves us and that in the end, his plan is good for us. And don't forget others as you navigate through the seasons of life. There are people who need Jesus. And it is extremely important that they see us navigating with joy, with trust, with anticipation. Everyone here will go through joyous events. Everyone here, your faith will be tried. And you'll go through some hard times. Remember, your times are in his hand. Live that out when you're in the valley. Aren't you glad he's the God of the mountaintop and the God of the valley? That he's there for you no matter what. Solomon, the wisest man to ever walk the earth, had to write out a complete journal in trying to figure this out. He should have shot to the end. Fear God and keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. But he was just like us. I'll try one more thing. I'll go in one more direction. I got this guy I can talk to. I think I know best. It's my life. Your times are in his hand. Being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will perform it until Jesus Christ. I don't want to build my life. I don't want to try to sustain my life. I don't want to try to embellish the things in my life. I want God to do what God wants to do. Every time David in the Old Testament made a mistake and judgment was going to fall and God would give him a choice of what judgment would fall, David always learned to look at God and say, you decide, Lord. You know best. I made a mistake. If you are going to judge me, I don't need to choose what you're going to do. My times are in your hand. Do you trust him that much? Ask him to increase your faith because faith is a gift from God. Let's bow for a word of prayer together. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Just for a moment, folks. This is real life. We go through real challenges. We're not messing around today talking about things that don't happen. I have seen countless believers throughout the years fall by the wayside because of a new season in life because things have gotten hard or difficult or confusing. It's always right to trust him. It's always right to praise him. It's always right to give thanks in all things. Your times are in his hands. He has divine ownership. I know we resist that. We battle it. Whether you agree or not, it's true. He's in charge. Ultimately, he will have his way. Why not lovingly submit to his plan for your life? Why not give him everything? Why not love him realizing he wants good for you more than you want it yourself? If we would simply put him first, He would come through in a magnificent way. Maybe God's working on your heart today. I am not going to play Holy Spirit of God. I don't know what's in the recesses of your mind, but maybe God is speaking to your heart about the season you're presently in, the season that you fear that hasn't even come yet, distractions, problems, discouragements. Your mind just races. And it's hard for you to even function. Maybe right now you need to lay some things at the foot of the cross. 
and by an uplifted hand you say, yeah, that's me. Pray for me. Thank you, dear lady. Thank you, dear lady. Thank you, dear lady. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hands all over. It's okay not to know when you have a great God in your life. It's okay. In fact, it limits the choices when you simply look up and give everything to him. Right now, I would encourage you to say, Lord, I resign, just quietly in your heart, I resign as CEO of my life. It's yours. It belongs to you. I trust you even though I don't know the big picture. You know the beginning from the end, and I'm going to start looking up and allowing you to be God in my life. Father, thank you for your people today. And Lord, it's a complicated subject as we look at the seasons of life. But Lord, might we look at it intently with the mind of Christ filled with the Spirit of God who drives the Word of God home to our hearts and realize there's a lot there. Help us to meditate on the seasons of life and our trust, our faith, our obedience to you and your commandments. There is a world watching that needs Jesus. We need to navigate differently than all others. All those that are out there who are outside of Christ, we must navigate differently if they're going to come to Christ. Help us, we pray. We love you, and we thank you, Father, for your word. We ask it in Christ's precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening, and uh, let's do something about this, amen? Let's do something between us and God. A couple of announcements for you I want to...